Welcome to the Warriors of Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. Warriors of Grace is about helping men from generation to generation become gospel men in private, in the home, in the church, and in public through the Word of God. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Warriors of Grace podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. And today we continue our Prayer and the Sufficiency of Christ series. Uh, This is episode six in this series. It's titled Consistent Persevering Prayer. Today we're going to look at Ephesians 6, 17 through 18 as part of this series, Prayer and the Sufficiency of Christ. Ephesians 6, 17 through 18 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Now, Paul's description of the various elements of the armor of God, it concludes with his reference to the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God in Ephesians 6.17. As the piece that protects the soldier's head, the the helmet is essential to keeping a soldier alive and conscious, thereby enabling him to continue in his mission. The sword is vital for it's a weapon with which every fighter can defend himself against blows and fight back against his enemies. The Lord's armor in, in this passage, the background of it is Isaiah 59, 17 through 19. For God himself dons a helmet of salvation And in Isaiah 59, he fights against his enemies. Now, this is an interesting image because the Lord certainly does not need to be saved from sin and death as we do. J. Alec Moiter's superb commentary on Isaiah indicates that in this passage, God's donning of various armor pieces indicates who he is and what he intends to do. The Lord puts on his helmet of salvation on Isaiah's day both to show the nation of Israel and the entire world that he is salvation itself and that redemption would be accomplished in line with his purposes. For us to put on the helmet of salvation indicates more about more than a rescue from sin and death. It also means that we arm ourselves with the ability and the desire to proclaim to the ends of the earth that salvation is from the Lord. In fact, furthermore, it demonstrates that we will work to establish his purposes for the church, the first fruits of God's redemption in line with his instructions from the Lord. All of these points are outlined in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 2, Ephesians 4, 17 through 32, Ephesians 5, 1 through 6, 9. Ancient Roman soldiers carried different weapons and the sword Paul likely has in view is a short-handled sword used in offensive combat against the enemies of caesar's legions in the christian life this sword is the word of god and commentators believe isaiah eleven fourteen is an important background text here there the messiah strikes the earth with the rod of his mouth in that prophecy and so paul may be emphasizing that the preached word of god as our offensive weapon against satan and this makes sense that For as the word is preached, sinners are rescued from the devil's grips, and believers see the sins for which they need to repent. As Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. In fact, John Calvin states that by faith we repel all the attacks of the devil, and by the word of God the enemy himself is slain. If the word of God shall have its efficacy upon us through faith, we shall be more than sufficiently armed both for opposing the enemy and for putting him to flight. And so as we study and proclaim the word of God to our friends and our neighbors, the kingdom of Satan falls. But there's a great danger for us, especially us as men. We cannot succeed against the devil if we rely on ourselves. We need the belt of truth to keep the daggers of false doctrine from cutting our legs underneath us. We need this today. We need to be in the Word of God ourselves. Our prayers need to be grounded and rooted, not just in what we think and whatever we want to say, but they need to be rooted in the Word of God. That's why we're doing this series. 
Christ's imputed righteousness gives us ultimate protection from condemnation and accusation. And the breastplate of a spirit-developed righteous character guards against the powerful blows of sin that tries to destroy our hearts. The shoes of the gospel of peace give us solid footing and ready us to fight. Faith acts as a shield that drives us to seek shelter in God against the flaming arrows of enticing temptations. Salvation, our helmet, protects our mind. It enables us to remain focused on the kingdom. God's word is our mighty sword, the weapon that brings the Lord's enemies to submissive repentance and keeps us on the narrow way, forcing us to our knees in gratitude for the salvation that we have and for sorrow for sin. Our ultimate reliance on Christ for our success in spiritual warfare is underscored in our text today. In fact, the participle phrase used in Ephesians 6, 18, praying at all times in the Spirit, it covers everything that comes before it. And in doing so, it indicates that we don't don the armor of God. We clothe ourselves in Christ himself by per consistent, persistent prayer. Praying at all times is nothing less than taking every opportunity to acknowledge our weakness, our need for the Lord's mighty help against Satan. Prayerful dependence must be the consistent attitude of our hearts, both in difficult times that make us quick to run to God, and when prosperous seasons tempt us to forget our need for God. And so John Calvin writes, Paul therefore desires us to allow no opportunity to pass on no occasion to neglect prayer. So that praying always is the same thing as praying both in prosperity and in adversity. In both seasons, we need the Lord. We need his help. And so the prayer is to be made in the spirit, which is not a reference to, <coughs> it's not a reference to speaking in tongues. It refers to petitioning God for specific things. All prayer and supplication through the spirit, who is the one who prompts us to pray and then takes what we offer and makes it acceptable to the father as he says in Romans 8, 26. So the Lord wants us to make specific requests to him, understanding they will be granted in accordance with his perfect revealed will in the word of God. In addition to being specific in prayer, God also wants us to be persistent in intercession. And this is a good reminder for us today. As we're prone to stop praying, to give up when we're discouraged, when we don't get an answer for the things that we need, but we must persevere in asking for God's help, even if it seems like he's delaying his response. The Lord may just be waiting to see persistent prayer before he acts. And also the Psalms talk about this again and again, wait on the Lord. This expresses a confidence in the sovereign power of God. So dear Christian man, don't give up praying. Keep praying, keep trusting, keep holding fast because Christ is holding fast to you. In fact, if you look at the context of this text that we're looking at today, you see what is called union with Christ. We are in him and he is in us. We are his and he is ours. And this is a tremendous encouragement that when we struggle in prayer, and we, we will at times, the Lord holds us fast. He is, he is holding us fast. Romans 8, 31 through 39 tells us this. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ our Lord. So be encouraged today that it might seem that, you know, you're not going to continue in prayer. You're not getting the answers that you want. Keep pouring out your heart before the Lord who knows you, who sees you, and, and who loves you on account of Christ. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Warriors of Grace podcast. Until next week, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Warriors of Grace podcast. If you enjoyed the show today, please subscribe, leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you want to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or search Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find our show on the front page of the website servantsofgrace.org.